Every day. Every day. Every day. April. Hello and welcome to this, the eighth installment of my vlog every day in April. So whenever I'm feeling like life isn't stressful enough, I like to pay a visit to the old focusonthefamily.org. I know that Focus on the Family's views don't represent all Christians, but I think that many Christians feel like they should. So I'm always reading up on the latest views that they have on homosexuality. It's an interesting time for the church. The issues I take with Christianity usually involve some of the flaws that you can see, some of the very human flaws. Christians like to band together and say that they feel one way about things when sometimes they don't. There's a pretty stark double standard going on here, and I get pretty pissed off about it. So let's take a look at that. So I'd really like us to agree that most Christians believe that when they're condemning homosexual relationships, they're upholding a biblical sexual ethic. What I found really intriguing on Focus on the Family was this interview with an ex-gay and an ex-lesbian. An underlying theme of the overall discussion was that both people felt sort of alienated by the church. There were some very real feelings behind this, because the gay guy actually went to a church who said, there's essentially a hotter place in hell for you. So of course he left, and he went to the gay community, where he describes feeling very welcomed for the first time perhaps in his life. The two ex-gay people, woman and man, both describe the same feelings of feeling basically like Christians don't like them. And you wonder why, because when you go to like a gay pride parade or something, what sort of emotions are most Christians who are protesting trying to display? Are they displaying their love for the gay people? Many people will argue that they do, but I will say absolutely not. Both of these people then described going back into the church and leaving their gay lives behind. And what they both described was kind of an overwhelming feeling of welcoming from people on an individual basis in the church. They said that while these people were not condoning their homosexuality, they were exhibiting very loving behavior or something like that. So not the hate that they saw when they were at the gay pride parades. And isn't this all too typical? I see this so often. Of course, on an individual basis, a Christian person is taught to be loving and caring. But what happens when they get together in groups? What happens when they go to protest at these gay pride parades? If you wanna call that love, I say you're crazy. Maybe there have been protests before that uphold these Christian values of just kind of loving and trying to show the light to whoever whomever, whoever, might not be able to see it. Let's get to what I'm trying to get to here. These individual Christians are taught to show love to their neighbor, no matter what their lifestyle. They clearly don't have this down in a lot of their protests. Why are they protesting in the first place? Because they want to uphold this biblical sexual ethic. What are the biggest factors in that ethic? What does the Bible say about this? The Bible says that sodomy, sex in the butt is wrong. Man lying with man, and presumably woman lying with woman, is also wrong. These are kind of the two big main factors here. What are many fundamental, fundamental-ish Christians attacking gay people for? Sex in the butt. What has Focus on the Family attacked gay people for? Sex in the butt. And here's where all of this is coming together into the one point that I want to make to you, something that I discovered today on Focus on the Family that I think is a pretty nasty double standard. Dear Focus on the Family, what is Focus on the Family's perspective on the issues of oral and anal sex? And I'm going to read for you part of Focus on the Family's reply. Mutual consent is basic to all healthy sexual expression in marriage. Consent implies that both parties know what's proposed and expected, that they are clear as to the ramifications physically and emotionally to the suggested activity, that there is room for discussion, and that both partners are always free to say no. Respect, humility, forbearance, which are essential to all human relationships, are of the utmost importance here. A large part of this answer is saying that oral sex, yeah, whatever, but anal sex has some health risks. Focus on the family's stance is apparently not to completely condone anal sex. So what argument do they have against homosexual relationships? Sodomy has been such a powerful weapon of choice for them. It's a huge pillar holding up all these protests. And yet when two people who happen to be a man and a woman, you know, the ones who are even allowed to get married, can apparently enjoy within their marriage anal sex. They are, after all, God's chosen people. Anyway, I know my argument's a little disorganized. I know that there's a lot I'm not bringing up, a lot I'm not talking about, and that's where you guys come in. I just wanna see in the comments how you feel about this. I want you to tell me if you think this is a double standard. I want you to tell me if you think this legitimately weakens their argument. Stuff like that, I don't know. I need to calm down. I'll see you guys tomorrow.